Good morning, everybody. Jim Fleeler, Vice President of Sales for Charlotte Products. Uh, welcome to today's webinar series, uh, our brand new series uh, for 2022, really designed as an educational piece to help each one of you uh, with the products to use, the processes to use, and really to use as an ongoing educational tool that are available on our website at charlotteproducts.com under our resource library. And uh, you'll see this series go by weekly all year long with various different topics. We'll be able to pivot extremely fast if there's a new variant that comes about or whatever it may be. But again, welcome. So we'll get right into it here today. Today, we're going to talk about how to select the proper disinfectant. And we're really going to talk about the particular three different levels of disinfectants, which are low, interim, and high level disinfectants to help you choose the right one for your facility. So really, let's explore those three levels of disinfectants you know so there are three for sure and the, the first one being low level and that's when you're using a disinfectant that you need some basic peace of mind insurance of, of the disinfectant property but you're not going to use it on anything that is critical item okay and it will encounter intact skin and that means skin that does not have uh, open wounds or cuts and things like that then you'll move to an intermediate level you may decide that you need that for your facility and that's for use on non-critical items and also some critical items so that's what we call our middle of the road disinfectant and then there's you go to high level and high level is when you really use that on uh, semi-critical items emergency rooms operating rooms um, you know food processing and non-intact skin so that's really the levels that you're looking for uh, and that's standard across the globe as far as that goes okay some additional points to consider when choosing your level of disinfectant it is not necessarily all about the higher number of stated pathogens or kill claims okay that does not mean it's necessarily better like put it this way if you do not have a threat of C. difficile do you need a disinfectant that's rated for that because the more kill claims that are on a label the more uh, aggressive the chemistry normally is and remember our numbers from the last two years with COVID is that 95 percent maybe 90 now of the world's disinfectants are used incorrectly so if you've got an aggressive chemistry you're not using it correctly we're actually going to create uh, a threat with um, with anti resistant bacteria um, and immunities down the road your selection of a disinfectant depends on the specific virus or bacteria risk okay some of you if you're in a healthcare facility you're going to have obviously a higher risk. If you're in a manufacturing facility, generally it's deemed not as high as risk, right? The, t the number of head count in your building, I mean, if you have three people, it's a low risk. If you have 3,000 people, obviously higher. And the type of facility as well as the soil level. If you're in manufacturing, you've got a lot of grease, some proteins, things like that, food service, whatever it may be. You need a little bit more detergency as opposed to kill claims. But again, if you're in OR or ER, uh, then you're definitely going to need the uh, the higher kill claim there. So so really, it's uh, it's um, it's a combination of what detergency level do you need and what uh, what kill claims do you need as well. Okay, always we want to follow the five critical elements of disinfectant security. And that is really using a registered product, diluting it correctly, respecting the dwell time, uh, pre cleaning. Sorry, is number two as a matter of fact, and then also uh, using a food contact, uh, wa a potable water rinse with a food contact. And then validation and measurement of your progress. I mean, you've really got to look at that now because really visual cleaning is no longer acceptable. Times are changing. And we would also reference our OptiSolve uh, digital imaging program for that, as a matter of fact, uh, which is a great, uh, great assurance for you. The proper process when disinfecting or sanitizing. Step one always always pre-clean pre your surfaces right using a very good quality cleaner match to that particular soil load of your facility a lot of grease you need a good surfactant a good a good degreaser a uh, mild amount of grease you need the middle of the road there with good properties there good surfactants and things like that but also not too aggressive so it doesn't leave residual and it doesn't damage any of your surfaces right you know so you really want to match it to the soil load of your facility step two 
using the appropriate disinfectant or sanitizer again based on what you what you need for claims you know so you really want to understand do you, is norovirus a threat is c difficile a threat is sars cov2 a threat is uh, staphylococcus aureus a threat it just depends on what it is so again that's where your label comes into it diluting it re uh, accurately respecting the dwell time wiping the surface down and again rinsing food contact surfaces with potable water around you know ch children uh, teething uh, teething preschool you know and uh, and also food and things like that as an outbreak step and this is really where people don't understand you need to select a high level disinfectant based on the threat at the time and we're just not talking about uh, SARS CoV-2 or COVID-19 there's you know there was SARS back in 2003 there's polio there's all kind AIDS HIV things like that so whatever the threat is at the time you really need to match your high level disinfectant at the time as well okay so and then at that same time you've got to implement a, a, a training program you revisit it with your with your custodial and janitorial teams making sure they know this is the product to use at this time these are the surfaces and this is exactly how to uh, to implement and execute that cleaning process through the facility so these are very very important steps here one two and an outbreak step our long-standing disinfectant message has been very simple. As a matter of fact, we've carried this message for the last five, six, seven years or so, where we really want the facilities to safely remove organic matter and then caringly, sparingly, and thoughtfully apply disinfectants and sanitizers to those higher risk, high contact points, right? Just using a, a very aggressive disinfectant and not using it properly is going to cause any resistant bacteria right so what's your return on investment when you implement this particular phrase number one lower risk of cross-contamination i don't think there's anybody that doesn't want that improved employee wellness less aggressive chemistry that is critical there's a lot of sensitivities now with lungs and skin and skin absorption and remember anything that touches your skin pretty well is absorbed into your body so that aggressive chemistry let's address that use it properly and make sure we improve employee wellness a lower dollar spend there's budgets budgets are not going up as a general rule in fact Fact, they're probably in most case down so a good quality cleaner using it followed up with a disinfectant the right level uh, on those higher risk high contact points is less money every single time right you've got cleaner surfaces because the good quality cleaner is based on detergency and end results not just kill claims in 27 letter words sustainability big issue we're being challenged with these days you know safer sewage discharge instead of that aggressive chemistry going down to into our lakes and streams and sewage water treatment plants and things like that let's make sure we're caring for each and every one of us here as as we as we go through this uh, this life and across the globe uh, and a lower risk of the creation of antibiotic resistant bacteria i mean if that isn't enough return on investment points for you i don't know what is but really this is something Thing you really really need to take and and digest with your uh, with your custodial team and janitorial team and things like that because this is really your best return on investment let's talk about a few examples of our low-level disinfectants that you would choose from okay again non-critical not in contact with uh, you know it won't in, it will encounter intact skin not not open wounds and cuts and things like that but we have our ES 24 plus food service disinfectant cleaner no fragrance no dye obviously okay es24 right this is for across canada and the us these particular products here and i'll show you uh, how to choose the right one at the end in our resource library uh, es24 uh, is uh, is our canadian uh, product with a din number es25 plus as well is here for the us and that's a disinfectant cleaner and heavy duty muscle degreaser and then es 25 is for Canada here and that's this the same thing um, and that's a heavy-duty degreaser and muscle degreaser so if you're looking for a low-level 
extreme deep cleaner muscle degreaser any one of these will do the job for you uh, but pay particular note to the food service ones because there are no fragrance and dyes and or don't have any dyes and they're used in those particular areas of food prep and processing when we go to interim level disinfectants rating number two that's uh, again non-critical and some critical items but you can see a wider array here and remember in the disinfectant cleaning world um, you know generally the more uh, detergency you need is the lower the kill claim if you the middle of the road is the middle of the road with good detergency and good kill claims but then when you go to high level it's a very light soil load uh, as a general rule but all but very high kill claims as a matter of fact so it's really given take with with the amount of comparing kill claims with the detergency so number two ES64H, uh, our neutral cleaner uh, uh, disinfectant uh, in Canada with a DIN number, um, you know, rated with SARS-CoV-2. We've got our ES128, which is our disinfecting sanitizer. We've got ES15, our number one seller, which is ready to use. ES65, hydrogen peroxide base, no fragrance, no dye. ES67 in the US and ES512 as our food service sanitizer. Number three, which is our high level, ES364 kills SARS-CoV-2 uh, in 60 seconds, are ready to use ES15. And I would use ES15 in those outbreak situations where you really want to go through your facility and give peace of mind assurance that you've, you're reaching all of those uh, and, uh, contact points and eliminating uh, the risk of cross-contamination. And our hospital grade ES256H, which is probably our most economical and one of the higher kill claims products that we have. So you'll see here, there is a chart here as a summary for the US, and there's a summary also for Canada that you have here. And uh, and this will really help you with the features, the unique value proposition, the, the what type of facility it does, and even the dilution ratio. So again, product knowledge for you. Here's the Canadian list and away we go. Okay. As far as resources, there are are all kinds of available resources on our charlotteproducts.com library. I have one here that's how to select the right one for Canada, for the US. We have ones in the five critical elements of, uh, of disinfecting and then the importance of measuring quat and disinfecting uh, the parts per million on how to calculate it and things like that. So with that being said, that covers our topic for today. I think we're in our time frame. as a matter of fact. We are going to be hosting these bi-weekly. Our next one is really going to be talking about disinfectants again and the five critical elements of, of disinfectants disinfecting and also delivery methods and some more product knowledge there. So again, thanks for joining us. Stay safe uh, and we'll talk soon. Thank you.